today we talk about what what do you actually yeah i didn't even ask you are you are you still um waitering like are you doing other things yeah so i'm a server i work at veselka uh which is a 24-hour diner in the east village it's famous it's been around for 65 years and uh i've got it down i'm only working on uh two nights a week uh which is pretty cool because this is for the first time in my life like when i got to the city and i started we work, working here and there, working at waiting tables or working in TV production, trying to be an actor. I never had enough time to actually be an actor and I was living week to week. Now I've got it down to I'm making my weekly money in two days and I'm doing stand up uh, like way more often. And it's, I'm really excited. It's funny that it took till I'm 38 <laughs> to get there, but um, I decided to stop playing defense against my own greatness. Nice. <laughs> Does that make sense? I like it. Yeah. No, I, I, I get that sense, especially from my parents' generation where like, and it was a different world, obviously. So you get this notation of just like, don't lose, you know, it's never go get it, go win. I mean, it's kind of like that, but it's, it's very safe positions. Like mm-hmm. go be a doctor, go be a lawyer, go be an engineer, go do something. Oh safe. Yeah, yeah. It's never like, Hey, you're kind of good at this thing. Maybe you should look into it. Maybe yeah. take that risk. Don't and go shoot to, for the stars. Yeah. Go take that risk and move to LA or, you know, yeah, do this. And like yeah. my, par- my, my parents don't like that I'm doing stand up now. And I'm like, still yeah. a doctor, you know, <laughs> that's hilarious, yeah. man. They don't want, they don't, they want you to put all your eggs in someone else's ass. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm that's sorry. good. I might steal that from Please my Please do, man. Please do. Uh, yeah. I, um, uh, man, like um, my dad and I don't have a great relationship and I, he thinks I'm like lazy and I'm not applying myself. And this is actually the best I've ever been applying myself. Like, I'm really trying to be a, a great stand-up. And uh, he looks at it like, well, you're only working two days a week. And I'm like, no, I'm working fucking seven days a week at comedy. And I make my... I, the battery that fuels this operation right, right, is the working two days a week yeah, over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't want to work that much. I don't want to work fucking 50 hours a week for someone else. Work sucks. Everyone knows that work sucks. If you could stop doing your doctoring and just do comedy you would do it right no because oh, that actually fulfills you i feel like well a if it fulfills uh, b it pays way better than comedy right. will anytime soon okay um if ever to be honest with you the mm-hmm. more i learn about comics like the big deal comics these yeah. a-list comics and i'm hearing you make how much what? <laughs> it's, so, <laughs> like, it's, a, it's insane yeah. man what are we doing <laughs> what and that's I, I made this realization at a at a show i went to uh and i was like why are there all these free shows that you can go to and see great comics and yeah. i realized Oh, right. The currency is fucking laughter. They just want to see you laugh. So they make, even make the show free and, and give up their time free just so you can mm-hmm. laugh. For yeah, yeah. Now, um, uh, the, but the, the main reason I would never leave the doctor thing, even if I were to become like a, a crazy famous, famous movie star and all that kind of shit, which obviously that's a, a one in a billion chance as it is, but pretend it were to happen. I feel like the nice thing, and even now especially, uh, the nice thing with being a doctor is it keeps me grounded and it gives me... Um, a perspective that otherwise I would lose if I was just doing nothing but comedy all day, every day. You know what I mean? That's true. Because A, it provides material, clearly, and let alone unique material that no one else is going to be able to steal. Fecal you know? material. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you don't want to be a shitty comic. Hey. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> no, so no, sorry. I do all these myself. So, uh, uh, I'm constantly trying to fill that quota of one butt pun per set. Good, uh, good. But no, it's... Uh, it's um, it's kind of nice too because like I feel like and I didn't appreciate this until like a little bit after with the YouTube stuff and, yeah. and more experiencing more of the creative works but you realize like for a lot of creative types how fragile their egos are like one negative comment and they're just like break down or whatever um, and then you realize like holy shit man like a lot of this creative stuff and kind of like what your dad's alluding to like you're only working two days a week because no one really views the comedy or the singing or the acting as like a real thing or a respect thing and even you start to get in your own head you're like dude is this even really important like am I just wasting my time Uh so this this gives you uh, like legitimacy exactly as a doctor you're a fucking doctor right so like you You can never challenge me like you can never call me shit yeah or, or say something mean to me and have me be like, oh man, do I really suck? Am I really yeah. a worthless waste of uh, something that's not even talented? Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll never end up being like a great comic, but I'm a great doctor, man. Like, yeah. and, and it's and I'm doing something real. Like, you can yeah. never debate that for yeah. me. You know, I'm if actually you, saving lives, literally. So, if you think I'm a bad comic, I will literally get in that ass. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. I think for that for that perspective, um, and I and I want to keep that groundedness to it. I don't know that yeah. I'll ever really leave doctoring. But yeah. you're right, man. At the end of the day, it is a job. So like, you'll have those days where it's like, fuck, man. I don't want to get out of bed. Yeah. I don't want to go to work. I don't want. But luckily, what, it's not a horrendous job where like I want to kill myself. Yeah. It, comedy seems like a uh, a drug habit that we have. Then and we have to figure out a way to su- supplement that. You yeah. know what I mean? Like like how a heroin addict has to go hustle to make enough to buy his drugs every night. Yeah, like yeah, we yeah. really, we do it at a loss. Like I, I spend, we spend so much money on mics, on hanging out Fuck at shows. Money. How about the time, dude? Like That's what I'm saying. It's eight, nine time, hours of open mic is, just to do 15 minutes total? Like Time is money, bro. Jesus. I know. Like I, I barked for two hours for a show the other night. Um, I sold some tickets to the show, so that was cool. And then I got to do uh, nine minutes of, of material, um, and that was like a, that's a pretty great ratio, actually, cons- considering a lot of times you'll put in even more time and get even less stage time. Right, right, right. But uh, uh, you know, sometimes uh, significant others don't even understand it. It's like I might not be performing tonight, but I have to be in the arena. Yep. For when they call my name, right, right. you know, so that those dudes, by being there, they see me, and I might get booked on someone else's show. Someone might have canceled last minute. Uh, just being around it all, you have to, you have to be, be like, so, you know, like in, in a Minority Report, like the co- the precogs that are like laying in the fucking juice, whatever it is. Like we have to be in the comedy juice <laughs> at all times. So yeah. that we come become fucking yep. uh, like psychic comedians. <laughs> Does that make sense? Not, not even psychic comedians, but I know exactly what you're saying because first of all, I feel funnier now than yeah. ever just because I've surrounded myself with comedy. Yeah. So even just the learning environment, let alone like hopefully getting my break or getting booked on shows or yeah. whatever, just even being around the comedy, I uh-huh. feel like helps me. Period. Cool. Um, and even I mean, I was at a show last night and I just came up with two new jokes. I was like, oh, this is this. This inspired me to remember this whole thing from my childhood. And I'm yeah, dope, this. dope. So that kind of happens. And then, um, but you're totally right, man. You got to be in the arena. People got to know who yeah. you are. Like, you can't. I, I love when comics get bitter, like, oh, why is so and so getting booked and I'm not? It's like, dude. Yeah, dude, that's the game, man. Yeah, that's the fucking that's, game. And it sucks to some extent. Yeah, you yeah. would wish it was a pure meritocracy, but nothing really is if you break it down. You know? No, it isn't. It isn't. Unless and the I, meritocracy is, can you play this Monopoly game of play, comedy? Well, you know? yeah, I mean, like, a lot of. I I get jealous of when a cute girl comedian posts a Facebook status like I just farted and it smells like bad onions and it gets like 200 likes and I'm like well I actually just farted and it smells like bad onions and I can't get 7 likes and I get I get jealous of people's likes and it's it makes me hate myself that I even care right right, right. but it's real man yeah. there's so much jealousy and I, one of the things I've heard is that um Nobody is ever taking anything from you. Yeah. There's literally I don't I don't know if it's true, but we can actually all make it. Yep. I think it's true, it's, personally. Yeah, I in think this it's, era, I mean. Just well, because, yeah, because let's say everyone that goes to auto shrunken head. Let's say we all work really hard and we find our lane. We every single guy and girl can make it. Yep. Because we're not. They're not saying, all right, one guy from this auto shrunken head, one guy from this mic is going to make it. That's not how it works. Yep. And when Osama Siddiqui gets a TV show, that doesn't mean that Sadra doesn't get a show. You know? Right. Like, that's not and, how it works. And it's not even that, but like, may, there may be a finite number of Hollywood uh, uh, TV shows being offered or TV deals or whatever. But with this beautiful thing of YouTube, uh, it's, <laughs> it's literally limitless. Like, yeah. anyone can start a channel, anyone sure. can start a following, and we all have different styles of humor. And like, the Discovery card hit you really hard, yeah. but maybe one of my butt jokes hit someone else really hard. And, yeah. And now we both have <laughs> one passionate fan, right? So I think, yeah, I, I totally agree. In this era yeah. where you just got to make your own way, that's why it shocks me that more comics don't push their social media that hard. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've hit on to something there. Like, I think it's working for you. Um, I'm realizing I might have a likability factor. Um, like I said, I do hate myself. So it's seriously, it's hard to, like, promote yourself when you yeah. think you're garbage. 
Um, but I also I went think, through that phase, by the way. Yeah. Where I was like, I don't have anything I think is yeah. worth posting. But once I got over that, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to put myself out there. Fuck Dude, it. I was reading one of your captions. I don't know if we have time to go into it and read it, but it was. <laughs> it was I was like, this. I wanted to comment like this is the most insane thing I've ever read, <laughs> and it was so great because like you have all these like little inside jokes, and it's like I know that I could tell that people that are like actually following you like get all these references, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was like, oh my god. Sometimes dude. I'm the only one that gets the reference, but I, I'm just like, dude, fuck it. This like, is what I'm thinking right now. Just it was it really infectious. I was like, you're out of your mind <laughs> in a great way. Like, like what's the point of being a herb? That's like, oh, I don't want to say that right, because right, it right. might offend someone. You're just fucking out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really cool to see. And, like, people are going to latch on to that. Exactly. You find your crowd. And that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, Osama's doing his thing. You're doing your thing. And I'm doing my thing. Exactly. And and the best part about it is if it all goes nowhere, mm-hmm. at least I was comfortable not, like, editing myself or, or you know. Dude, you're, you're already a star. You know? Like, you have the fucking sneaker closet of an MTV Cribs <laughs> NBA all-star. <laughs> You know, like you have a podcast, you're a fucking, you're getting paid, you have the hair, you got the Groucho goggles on, like you're... What's that, sold up? A a real... (laughs) (laughs) One thing I realized uh, only very recently is that uh, I'm not going to need to wait around for someone to tell me I'm a comedian. Yes, exactly. It's comedian is something you get out and you do every day. Yep, exactly. And like I'm going around to mics to get on and guys that are up at the comedy cellar are also going around just trying to get get a set together. Yep, yep, yep. We're all trying to put a nice set together to get on Colbert yep. or whatever. You Which know? I don't think is the move. I think the move is to post your own stand-up. I post every set to YouTube. Oh, wow. And... Some of them, the early ones, have literally thousands of views. Holy shit. The more recent ones, consistently a couple hundred, if not 300. That's cool, man. So I'm building my own network, essentially. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I did it from scratch. I had no help. I had no cosigns. I had no sponsors, no nothing. And, um, and I think I'm in a un- unique position to do that because I have a job where you know it supports me very well. So I can have the free time uh-huh. even, aside from being like... Uh, you know, uh, not in financial, uh, you know, chaos where I can like pursue that and like really dedicate time to do it. But at the end of the day, it's hard work. Like yeah. I had to put in that effort instead of putting in the effort to like put in a five minutes and then mm-hmm. hope that someone books me or hope that blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put myself on. That's cool, man. That's and, pretty and cool. I've just been working on it. So yeah, you're like, oh, you have a podcast. Like, yeah, because I decided I want to have a podcast. Yeah, where? So no one told me like, oh, I think you can have a podcast. Yeah, like, yeah. My, my good man, <laughs> I declare the worthy of a podcast. Podcast. Yeah, exactly. I, I actually wanted to do a podcast, but I was like, who needs another podcast? That's, a, of course, that's what's holding you back. Of course you know? no one needs it. Right, right. But if you make it and people fucking think it's dope, then they'll be very happy that you did make it. Right. And, you know, man. we And we, maybe in this area you're not going to make a podcast that's going to get a Joe Rogan millions of consistent followers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you just want those handful of people that yeah. will latch on to you like that Discover card on the Salt Team. Like that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. really after, who you're after. It's like, yeah. who can I connect with? And, and maybe I, it's five people, maybe it's 5,000, maybe it's 50,000. Yeah. I think a lot of people, a lot of comics also come up with material on their podcast. Dude, I've come up it with seems, so many jokes. It seems to be I mean, We came thing. up with a good one here. Uh, put all your eggs in your ass. <laughs> I'll like get that. in that <laughs> ass, too. I'll get... <laughs> Actually, that, um, when we were talking weird. about the idea of what you're worth and everything, like, I hosted my show at No Fun Bar last night, and... Um, up top, I fucking ate it. I ate it so hard. Well, hosting is tough. I, I hate I, it. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm wrangling in a bunch of people. I'm barking at them from the street. I'm getting them into the show, and then I'm starting a show. And it's kind of it kind of feels like you're trying to like jumpstart a Volkswagen yep. and yep, like push good. it down the hill a little. And be like, all right, we, just, we got a show. So like, I have to eat a lot of shit in order to get that yep. motor to turn over. And so like, I got no jokes up top. I got I mean no laughs. I should say. And it just got me to a point where I was like, fuck, I'm the worst comedian. (laughs) And like very easily I could have also hopped across town and did a quick spot on someone else's show where I don't have all that pressure to start the show. And I could have had a great fucking eight minute set that would have changed. You know what I mean? Like there's really, um, you go through all the emotions and I think like there is no making it. There's just hanging in there (laughs) and there's just more spots to book. And sometimes those are on national television and sometimes they're on Netflix and sometimes you make them your own self. Yeah. Like, you know, if you have a good set and you promote it, right, there could be a day where it'll go viral and you'll have literally hundreds of thousands of views on it. That's so funny. On YouTube. And you don't need a co-sign by Colbert. You don't need a a TV network. to No, you're right. It's do it, man. It's there's no, uh, there's no excuses left these days. That's interesting. That is pretty, pretty wild. You know, I, you know, I, uh, 
I kind of spaced out for a second. 